Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, the channel that's all about spending less so that you can play more. And today I'm gonna show you how you can take a cheap AR rifle and make it run with 100% reliability no matter what type of ammo you use. Now, whether you have a cheap factory built rifle or if you have a cheap parts rifle that you piece together with just the least expensive parts that you can find, there's no reason you can't get it running with 100% reliability. That's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. Now firstly, I'm going to start off by saying that this is not a gun modification video, and this is not a gun building video. I'm not going to show you how to build or modify guns in any way. All I'm going to be doing is showing you how you can maintain your AR rifle so that it feeds and functions with 100% reliability, no matter what type of ammo you're using. Now this works for any of the AR platform, okay? Whether it's a pistol, carbine, a rifle length, or even in this case, an AR-10-308. Now I personally have built well over a dozen ARs, I think maybe this is is number 14 and this is my first 308 and I did the same tips that I'm going to show you on this rifle as I was building it and it does function with 100% reliability. All right now obviously if you're doing a custom build you can skip these steps but if this is your first time disassembling your AR rifle this is how you do it. First things first eject the magazine make sure your chamber is clear then we're going to pop out this rear takedown pin just push on it from the back side it'll pop out a little bit pull to release and then this will swing forward and loose. We'll remove our charging handle and bolt carrier group. Set those aside. And that's honestly good enough but to make this easier we're going to go ahead and pop out that front takedown pin as well. So just pop that up, pull it out and you're good to go. The first thing that we're going to work on is the buffer tube, spring, and buffer. So to remove your buffer you're going to push down this little spring detent right here and that'll pop right out like that. And go ahead and just work it all the way out. We're gonna pull out the spring as well. Now obviously I have a full length rifle stock on here. If you have a carbine or a pistol length buffer tube, then you'll need to remove your castle nut. But for me, I just need to slide my rifle stock off. And then you'll need either an AR armor's wrench or a castle nut wrench to remove your castle nut or your A2 stock. I'll tell you more about my armor's wrench a little bit later. Shoot. And don't do what I just did and let that spring and plunger fly across the room. Make sure you hold that down when you're undoing this. That was my bad. And now that we've got this all disassembled, I'm going to show you what you need to do to these parts to make your AR run 100% reliable. For this, you are going to need some 600 grit wet dry sandpaper. And then I like to use a Dremel tool with a cloth polishing wheel and some brown polishing compound. But you don't necessarily need the rotary tool, just a cloth with polishing compound will work just fine. This is just a little bit faster. And we're gonna start with the buffer tube. Oftentimes when you buy a cheap buffer tube or a cheap rifle, it will come with a cheap buffer tube. And on the inside, it may not be milled out very well. And so what we're going to do is remove any burrs and scratches inside there. This one actually feels pretty good. This is a CAC buffer tube. And it actually, I mean, looking down inside it, it actually has a really good smooth finish. So I'm not gonna work too hard or stress too much about this one. But if you feel down in there and you feel like it's not as smooth as it could be, we're gonna take our 600 grit wet dry sandpaper, just, you know, wrap it loosely around your finger and stick it in there and just kind of gently massage it around in there. And again, I'm not too concerned about this one because it feels pretty smooth. But what you can do then is, you know, you could tape it to a screwdriver and send that way down in there and get it smooth all the way down to the very back. But I'm not gonna stress too much about it. That actually feels pretty good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Now, your buffer spring, we're gonna do the same thing. So again, we'll just take our 600 grit sandpaper and we're just going to loosely kind of go like this. And all we're doing, we're not removing any material we're not removing the coating, we're just making the coating a little bit smoother. If there are any burrs or rough edges, we're knocking those off. That's, that's basically all we're doing here. Because what it comes down to is that the reliability of an AR pattern rifle depends on how well the gas system is timed and not have any burrs or rough edges that create extra friction that will cause hangups. And then now we're gonna do the same thing with the buffer. 
I'm actually really impressed with this whole CAC assembly. I've bought some really cheap AR parts before that have not been as nice as this. But you can see, especially these areas right here, I'm just kind of making sure we got no burrs or anything like that. Now again, our Dremel tool with the polishing compound on it. And we'll just go in just as far as we can reach. Just kind of polish up that inside, like so. Polish up our buffer edges. And I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm just reminding you, we're not removing any material. We're not removing the finish. We're just smoothing out these little edges that could cause little hangups down the road. Remove all this polishing compound here. Same for the spring. We didn't polish it, but we did sand it, so let's remove it. All right, then of course, reinstall your buffer. Now I might be a fan of budget ARs, but I am a fan of quality tools. I got this rad Midwest Industries Armors wrench. Great for installing this buffer tube. It's got these square holes in there for a half inch drive torque wrench. And then it's got just engraved on there the torque specs. So you can um, properly torque on your buffer tube, for example, as well as your barrel nut and flash hider torque. So very cool wrench. So a term that you're gonna hear from me quite a bit, I think in this video, is we're gonna run this wet. And that's one of the tricks I use for getting a budget AR style rifle to cycle reliably, is we're just gonna put on a little extra lubricant than we normally would. I am a fan of CLP. I've tried all kinds of different lubricants. People are always sending me new stuff to try, saying that their stuff is the new industry standard, it's better than CLP, whatever. Um, but I always come back to CLP. So what we're gonna do, is typically you wouldn't lubricate this part, but we're just gonna put a little bit of CLP on this. And the reason why you typically wouldn't lubricate this part is because it can get dirty and then cause it to foul up a little bit over time. But what we're going to do for the first, let's say thousand rounds of this rifle is we're gonna run it wet and we're gonna clean it often. Once it's running reliably uh, without having to do this, then obviously you use less lubricant and um, then you don't have to clean it as often. But for me, you know, like I said, I like to run them wet for that first like thousand rounds. It's more just training these parts to work together as a team. And as you can see, I'm really not putting that much on there. I'm just putting a little drip on my finger and just kind of rubbing it on the spring. Same as I did for the buffer. And same thing, I'm gonna just go on the inside of this buffer tube a little bit. And probably what I should have done is before I attached this and torqued it down, I should have put a little bit on a rag. That's actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a little bit on this rag here. And I'm gonna send that down, way down in there. So it kind of lubricates all the way back. Yep, that should be enough. Yep. And like I said, we're gonna be cleaning this thing off end, so getting a little extra lubricant in there is not going to be a bad thing by any means. Perfect. Wonderful. All right, for the upper parts, we're gonna do something similar for the bolt carrier group and the charging handle. Um, this charging handle actually looks like it's got a pretty decent finish on it. So I'm really not too concerned about it. It feels nice and smooth, but we're gonna go ahead and do these steps anyway. There's no reason not to. This bolt carrier group, however, and this is really common for cheap, inexpensive upper receivers that I've purchased in the past when it includes the bolt carrier group and charging handle. You can use a cheap one like this as long as you do these steps, okay? We're just, again, gonna take our sandpaper and we're gonna knock down any burrs. We're gonna smooth up the finish on this. We're gonna polish it really good with our polishing wheel. And, you know, I've used my Dremel this whole time. You don't need a Dremel tool and polishing wheel. You can use just a rag and your favorite metal polish will work just fine. But just like before, we're gonna start with a fresh piece of 600 grit wet dry paper. Um, and we're just going to give this thing just a quick little rub down treatment. All the areas especially that are gonna be rubbing up against the inside of our upper receiver. Make sure there's no sharp edges. And again, you know, we are really not removing any material here. I sound like a broken record. You don't wanna be removing material. All we're doing is just kind of slicking up this surface and removing any burrs. All right, now we're doing the charging handle. All right, like I said, not much to do on this. It's pretty much good to go. So we'll just go ahead and get out the polishing wheel. Got some fresh polishing compound, especially for this bolt carrier group, because it needs some help. Yeah, I can see just tons of machine marks left on this bolt carrier group, and that's what we're trying to smooth out. 
Again, we are not necessarily removing material to get it down to be a perfectly slick, glassy surface. We're just smoothing out all those bumps and voids so that we get smooth operation. We're not going for pretty, we're going for reliable. As you can see, this is definitely where I'm spending the most time, because this is where my specific AR builds needed the most help. Taking a closer look, you can see how I exposed some of these burrs and knocked them off here. You can see those little, they look like white or silver spots on there. Those were little burrs that could cause extra friction. They're just smoothed down, so I've got nice smooth action all the way across that charging handle. Same thing on this guy. Uh, it really exposed a lot of the tooling marks, especially right along here. You can see all the dents and bumps. And the point wasn't to sand those out because that would be removing too much material. The point is just to make those smooth. So as I run my fingernail across them, I don't get hung up on them at all. So it's important to get all the polishing compound off. You really don't want to have any left on there that's gonna gum up your rifle while you're using it. So clean that off the best you can. Like I mentioned before, we're gonna run this thing wet. I'm gonna put in a lot more lubricant than I would if I was running one of my already reliable ARs. And uh, I'm just gonna rub a little bit of the CLP pretty much inside this whole upper receiver. Anywhere that the bolt carrier group and charging handle are going to touch, I'm gonna to put a very thin, small layer of lubricant. Gonna do the same thing for the charging handle. On the inside of the charging handle here. Just kind of rub it around so that's a nice thin coating everywhere. Don't necessarily want it to pool up or puddle. That would be too wet. So kind of wipe off some of the excess a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put that guy back in. All right. And then, I trust me, I do know the proper way to lubricate one of these, but we are not gonna do that. We're just gonna put it everywhere. The only thing I'm not gonna put it is inside the gas key or inside the bolt carrier. And yes, I know that I am overdoing it, but like I said, we are going to just run this thing sopping wet. We are going to clean it often. And then once we get past that first thousand rounds, then we should be good to go for the rest of it. All right, that is nice and wet. All right, let's snap them together. All right, now that our gun is fully built and put back together, let's take it to the range and see what it can do. All right, first shots, I got three rounds of PMC bronze loaded up. All right, three shots flawless, locked back on the last round. Let's run a whole mag. 20 rounds in a P mag, PMC bronze. All right. It's running great. I'm just going to adjust my side a little bit. All right, locked back on last round. That's perfect. We're gonna use a P-Mag full of Winchester steel case ammo now. See if it likes that.
All right. Well, I don't know if I can afford too many more mag dumps. So I lied. We are gonna do one more mag dump. This time I'm just gonna do rapid fire. I've got one more. This is the steel magazine, the ASC magazine, and it's loaded with tool ammo. So rapid fire, tool ammo. If this doesn't jam up, then nothing will. Yeah! Feel the heat coming off that barrel. Well, I think I got what I wanted out of this thing. <laughs> Easy to point, uh, rapid rate of fire, and runs like a sewing machine. Just absolutely reliable. Now, I know I only put about 63 rounds through this rifle, and that's really just because 308 is a lot more expensive than 223 or 556. Typically, with one of my other AR builds, I would run at least 200 rounds through it before I cleaned it. But like I said, 308's a lot more expensive. So I'm gonna call it a day, clean this rifle, make sure that it's lubricated nice and wet for our next outing. And then I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna see what this rifle can do accuracy wise. So if you wanna see an accuracy test and a full review of this Bear Creek Arsenal AR-10 style upper receiver that I got for less than $260, including the bolt carrier group and charging handle, then definitely make sure you're subscribed because that video is gonna be coming up here soon. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars and I'll see you in that next video.